Today Dundalk TV is with Jimmy Johnson on the corner of Dundalk and Hollibird Avenue and I saw Jimmy out on the corner and he was talking to people in cars and uh, has a, a, a problem or has had a problem with uh, drugs in the past and is working on um, changing his life. I've been using since I've been about 10, 10, 11 years old. I'm 31 in a few days here, May 16th, I turned 31. Uh, I would say if the gateway drug thing about marijuana, it may not seem like it, but it's absolutely true. Um, I started off smoking my first joint with my mother. Um, before that, it was Percocets. After that, cocaine, you know, just the list. The list goes on and on, and uh, it's absolutely true. Um, I, uh, I did have a little bit of success in my life in my early 20s. I, I, you know, I joined the apprenticeship for the uh, IUPAT, which is a painter's union, and um, you know I did four years apprenticeship, became a journeyman. You know, but you know the, the hard work, you know, ended up pushing everybody towards you know one happy pill or another. So I started using heroin to you know work hard and long days and stuff like that. And before you know it, I lost I lost everything. Um, and you know, uh, my son is without his father now. Uh, I lost a girl of my dreams. I lost my house, my car. I lost everything. I'm homeless. Uh, it, it's a. It, it's I, honestly, if I had to, to guess, I would say that God said, you know, I gave you all these gifts, and now I have to take them away. Honestly, um, you know, kind of cut me down to size. I guess he thought maybe I was too big for myself, and I agree at this point. So now I'm out here on the streets and asking people to help me, just to give me little side jobs here and there. As you know, as I actually asked you today, and that's how you met me. Um, heroin is a horrible, horrible, horrible drug, horrible crutch. And same thing with cocaine. Um, I have to live my life day by day now without ever being able to look more than a few days ahead because of it actually um, it's made me lose all the trust and respect that I used to love I used to get looked at with such respect and ad admiration for my mother and my girlfriend my son you know and, and everybody else that was close to me but now they look at me with pity and, and you know it breaks my heart but I'm out here I don't want to mess in a program now, thank God, because it gives me some stability to at least be able to look for work and get things back together piece by piece. But it's still, you know, people look at me as they roll down their windows and they just sometimes they yell at me that I'm too young, I'm too this, too that, whatever, you know. And it just seems nobody really understands. Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. It, it, this, this, this disease, whatever you want to call it, it, it doesn't have an age limit or bracket and frame and time in your life. It can happen to anybody at any time. If you touch these drugs, you are going to go downhill, period. Okay, now, did you start drinking or smoking prior to smoking marijuana? Actually, actually, yeah. Um, I can remember breaking into some uh, antique wine bottles right before I started smoking, but it wasn't long after that before I was smoking cigarettes and smoking marijuana. And I, I, quit. I, I know that the... The alcohol and cigarettes are legal, but I consider them really the first gateway drug. Um, a lot of people like to say marijuana, but um, you know it is for some people. But I think a large majority, large majority, start with cigarettes, alcohol, then they turn to prescription medications. Is my viewpoint on on how people get started. Okay, well, I greatly appreciate you uh, being so candid about what has happened with you. You, you talking about your story, I hope that it helps you and helps other people. But uh, part of, another part that I would like to know about what is happening with you is uh, about the availability of uh, help that, and assistance that you have out here to, to beat the odds to uh, get back on your feet. Well, I will say this. If you're not serious, it doesn't matter what help is available to you because it won't work, first and foremost. Um, the amount of help out here is light to moderate, if I had to put it in a bracket. Um, I will also say that in this particular area, the general vibe that I get is kind of like, if you have to do it, people are going to have to do it, so they do it. But it's not a real serious You mean topic. if it's court ordered? Is yes. that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
And, um, and I've, I've talked to other people and I've tried to help them and, you know, tried to get them to go to different places. I talked to you about On Our Own and One yeah. Voice Dundalk and uh, actually Pastor Wright's um, uh, free drug and and alcohol education uh, course. I hope that you go speak to the pastor. He has helped many people and changed many what, people's what lives. Again? It's Merritt Park Baptist Church. It's on Merritt Boulevard, right across from where Verizon's at right now. Okay. Uh, the Radio Shack was there for years. So right across the street. And how do they treat people like in my situation? Like if I walk in there with dirty clothes, am I gonna be looked at like? They're gonna treat you like another child of God and like a human being that, that is having problems and that if you want help, they're going to be there to help you. They're, they're helping people to get the drug and alcohol education. They'll be there as um, a friend uh, supporting you throughout your um, uh, process of, of getting your life back together. One question. Um, one big problem I've had is because I am openly honest about my situation in the past with drugs. Um, one big thing I've always had a problem with is when I speak about me having an issue with you know, drugs and alcohol or whatnot. It's the fact that it's like they act like money I'm allergic to and I can't handle having work and having any type of like money, you know what I mean? And like if I was to go to the church and you know they were to help me in things like this and I was to say I need some help with work, whatever, I mean would would they just be like, well, I know you need help, yada yada, but I don't have any help for you as far as work, for you to be able to have a place to, you know, live and yada. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, they give the support. They don't have that kind of. Um, uh, you well, know. you know, like individuals sometimes, like somebody might own a, like a little lawn cutting business, something like that. You know what I mean? Yes. Would they be willing to like, you know, give somebody a chance? Well, there's a possibility. I I, I don't want to overstate anything. I and then again, I don't want to understate anything. Uh, you know, they believe in miracles. Uh, uh, very much um, I've spoken to people from the church they believe in miracles and and how things can turn around I just to come see you I ran into a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a long time and they are actually going door to door and doing some knocking and they are uh, with uh, St. Rita's Church and Our Lady of Hope I believe it was and uh, Sacred Heart of Mary as well and um, so they're out doing um, okay. God, God's work so you brought me in touch with an old friend today there so uh, and and uh, I, I really um, want to uh, see if I can help you I'm going to give you my number and then you can stay in touch with me and if I'm able to help you um, in any way but when I help people I want them to be going down the right um, path. The, the right path yeah. I know that some people do relapse at different times and you know I, I don't write people off but uh, you know, I want people to be serious about what, what they're doing because uh, if they're not, they're just wasting my time. Well, and just the fact that you stopped and talked to me means a lot. Well, know? I could see something in you. You're, you're a younger gentleman. I don't want to see you go through a lifelong of this. I know you can turn your life around. I do believe that Jimmy can beat his addiction. And if you or a friend has some kind of a problem with drugs or alcohol, contact Pastor Wright at 410-285. 1745 or my friends at One Voice Dundalk at 410-282-1705. You can also call me at 410-818-9733. And please remember that the power of prayer is very powerful. I am not a preacher, but I've seen how prayer has changed so many people's lives.